Well, I just bought a brand new ROZ straight out of the box and it's broken. Hey guys, what is up? Welcome back to the channel for another video. We got the Apollo ROZ back and it has been one year since we bought this bike. Uh, let me tell you what, it's been an experience with this bike. Today we're gonna hop into everything that has gone wrong with the bike in the last year. So you guys can know, be up to date on any kind of issues these bikes might have. So you know ahead of time what parts you might wanna have on hand to have with you on the trails. I have a from day one playlist you guys can check up above. That playlist shows you every single video that I've I've ever made with the Apollo RFZ, which is from the first day I've ever had it. So if you guys wanna see the complete history of everything this bike's gone through, you guys can go over and check that playlist out and it'll show you everything that's ever happened with this bike. So something that's important that you'll wanna know is where this bike has been riding and it's been mostly riding up on some super hard enduro trails up in the woods. Uh, it never gets ridden on the street or anything super mellow. Whenever this bike gets taken out, it is abused and used. So let's set that straight. So now that you guys know where I take this thing out and how I abuse it, we're gonna go ahead and just cover what is the bike that we have right here in front of us so you guys know exactly what bike I'm talking about. So this started out as a 2020 Apollo RFZ with a 125 cc engine and the 14 and 12 inch front and rear tire combo. So there really is three things on this Apollo that I've made and done to it custom that do make it its own dirt bike. And that would be starting off with, I have the big wheel swap on the front and rear. So we've upgraded to a 17 inch front, a 14 inch rear. If you guys wanna see that video on swapping and doing that swap, that'll be up in a playlist as well. And then we've also done a 150 cc engine swap as you guys may have known if you guys have been around the channel. So if you guys wanna check that playlist out, that'll be up in the top as well. The third thing we've done to really set this bike off is we have our own custom graphics kit from our boys over at Calair GFX. If you guys wanna get your own graphics kits for any of your dirt bike, that'll be linked down in the description box below. Now, before we get too far into this video, I wanna say massive shout out to all of you guys watching. Thank you so much. We've just hit 4,000 subscribers. Yeah. My birthday's coming around the corner. Two more months here and it will be my birthday in August. So uh, let's see, maybe we could hit 5,000 subscribers by my birthday. That'd be super appreciative, super cool. If you guys wanna leave a like down below, Low, that'd be awesome as well. So uh, without further ado, let's hop into uh, what's happened with this thing. So I just bought the bike. I ripped it out of the box and already the thing is broken. Well, kind of, but it's broken already out of the box. First day I get the bike. Triple clamp bolt here is already stripped out from factory. They didn't even bolt the bolt in correctly when they had the triple clamp sit in there and they already had it pre stripped out when I got the bike brand new in box. So that was my one default a broken thing that was already that way from the factory on my bike. So we just put some blue Loctite on the bolt and sent that sucker home. Now, before we start getting into the parts that are broken on it, because you know what, this list may be a little bit longer. I don't want you guys to think that I've just abused and just treated this thing like crap. Ugh. Ugh. I take this bike, do oil changes way more frequent than most people do. I do it like every eight hours on this dirt bike. For a Chinese dirt bike, that's quite frequent. Bolt and nut checks on it all the time. I'm always looking over it. I'm a mechanic, so it's like, it's by my trade to just go over and take care of this thing. And let me tell you what, there's been a lot of issues and it's not my fault. It's uh, just due to this bike's poor design in some certain areas. And we're gonna touch on that. But uh, yeah, just disclaimer, I don't treat this bike like crap. I actually treat it very well. Yes, I do see it's dirty from last ride. Don't hate me on that. So now as we hop into the parts that have broken, this is gonna be what's broken in order. As I've ridden the bike, we'll kind of throw in some hours in there so you can understand at one point in the riding life of this bike that things were breaking on it. So the first thing that we're always breaking on the bike is the rear brake lever and that is due to its poor design uh, where it actually goes underneath the peg instead of over top of it like a conventional bike and this is causing you to hit this brake arm on all sorts of rocks and uh, all sorts of things that otherwise wouldn't hinder your rear brake well this always likes to grab it and bend it way out or just snap it it causes a bunch of issues then you don't have any rear brakes for the rest of your ride or maybe the, the toe peg is now way out here and it's blocking your foot from standing on the peg so it can ruin your ride for sure now the second issue I ran into with these dirt bikes was a shifting issue with the original 125 cc engine uh, and that the shifter itself when you're riding and you want to change gears if you were to shift it up into second gear the shifter instead of releasing and coming back down to the the neutral or just middle position uh, would stay stuck up or stay stuck down when you'd upshift or downshift so you'd have to manually stick your boot under and pick the lever back up or push it back down so that was a huge issue uh, inside of the 125 cc engine was the transmission just being in a whole bunch of false neutrals now something else I had to go over and change right away was the carburetor. Now the stock carburetors that come on these bikes are pretty well junk and broken.
broken as is. So you might as well take that sucker off, throw it out, get a genuine Makuni carb and a UNI air filter, throw that on there and forget about that stock carb. If you still have that on your bike, you're missing out on potential performance gains and having your bike run a whole lot better. If you guys wanna learn how to do that, I do have a video up in the corner and that can help you out. Another thing that sucks and is broken on these bikes right from the get go is that stock air filter that comes on the bike. That cone air filter is junk. The mesh is way too big and lets way too large of particles into the carburetor and you're just gonna fill your carburetor with a whole bunch of dirt and then it's gonna run like junk. So ditch that stock carburetor, get a good UNI two-stage foam filter, stick that on there, set it, forget it. You don't have to worry about a whole bunch of debris getting sucked into your engine. Now the next thing that broke and that sucked on this bike was the chain. Now the rear chain is just too small and it stretches out because it's a really cheap crummy chain and what happens is the chain stretches out, you'll tighten the tire up to the stretch and then it's gonna stretch out further and then you'll tighten your wheel up further and then it's gonna stretch and just stretch and stretch and pretty much every time you go riding you're gonna have your chain come popping off the rear sprocket or worse the chain just actually snaps right in half and then you're screwed out in the woods. Pisser, pisser. I broke the chain. Broke the chain. So I would definitely go ahead and make sure you pick up a good genuine chain. If you guys are looking for that, they are listed down in the description as well as a whole bunch of other parts and modifications for your dirt bike. So make sure you guys go down there and check it out. Now the next thing that broke on my dirt bike was the rear exhaust bolt that is up here behind this plastic. Oh, it's, it's, the, it's, oh, it's the entire exhaust. Oh, the bolt came out. Well, that explain why she's rattly. Uh, the weld actually to the nut that would hold on for you to bolt in the slide on exhaust clamp. The nut weld just sheared and bolt, the bolt came right off. Like I didn't even try torquing it down crazy or anything. We we're just out riding and the weld broke off, the bolt backed out and then you have your muffler come flying off and fall off on the trail. You gotta have to check over the welds inside these bikes. Another issue I had with the bike is the kickstand and the kickstand spring specifically not being set tight enough on the kickstand. You go riding down the trail and the kickstand comes popping off in the middle of the trail. Your kickstand comes down, it jackknives in a rock and you go flying over your handlebars. Modifying your spring to be tighter set on the kickstand is gonna be important and crucial to making sure that your kickstand doesn't drop down in the middle of your ride. Now back onto the rear brake problems. When you hit this rear brake arm, the ear here on the frame, uh, the welds on it are likely to crack as I had mine crack on the brake and then the actual ear that holds on the brake lever cracked off the frame. So I had to re-weld that back onto the bike. So just to know that the welds on these bikes are pretty poor. Now an issue I had with the original wheel set on the bike with the 14 front and the 12 inch rear tire uh, was that the rims and the hubs themselves. The hubs would warp out, which would cause your bearings to wear out prematurely. And then when the hubs worn out, you can't just replace a wheel bearing and be good because the hub is still warped and the bearing doesn't fit tight no longer inside the wheel as well as the rims themselves on the smaller diameter wheels dented extremely easy uh, if you hit any sort of rock ledge or anything that was stiff you pretty much always guarantee putting a big friggin dent in the rim and those things look like octagons by the time I swapped them out for this big wheel set uh, so yeah those stock rims were junk as well as the spokes literally always came loose you could tighten them make the whole wheel nice and tight and by the end of the ride you'd have a spoke loose or broken or fallen out or it, it was a nightmare dealing with those smaller rims. Since I've upgraded with these, these are done a better job, but the hubs still like to oval out, uh, which causes wheel bearing issues and some play in both the wheels. Now for a bit of a timestamp frame for how long or how many hours I've ridden this dirt bike, at that point in this dirt bike's life, I had only put 30 riding hours on the dirt bike. All those things that I just said and talked about had been broken or wrong or messed up on my dirt bike in the first 30 hours of riding. So let's continue on and let's see what happens in the next 30 hours. Now, unfortunately, shortly after our 32 hour mark on the dirt bike, we killed the original engine that was in it. Now it's not necessarily due to piston failure. It's not exactly how I, how I was gonna be spending the day dirt biking. Woohoo. Well guys, this is not quite exactly where I thought I'd be today. Uh, getting towed. It had to do with the transmission inside of the 125cc. As I was talking earlier, that it had some shifting issues where it would constantly go into false neutrals and you'd have to manually push the shift lever back down into place. Well, unfortunately, it became where every single gear was a neutral, no gears worked, nothing would bite, and uh, sometimes it wouldn't even shift and it would get bound up and be stuck there. So I pretty much just ended up tossing that engine out. We got a freaking engine in her hand, boys. Sold it for super cheap, picked up a 150cc and just swapped this in because it's a direct swap you need two custom aftermarket parts so here's our 150 cc 
and bada bing, bada boom, you could stick a new engine in. But unfortunately at the 32 hour mark, we did have the original engine have a failure. Uh, so that is a substantial thing that the original engine was, just went kerput and uh, to try and find parts, not readily available. So is it worth spending your time or money to try and fix it? Not really. So what we do in the trash. There shortly after I ended up bending another one of these rear brake arms. Then shortly after that I ended up breaking one of these brake toes right off and snap that clean in half. So I had to get another one of those guys. Then after that I had the gas tank almost blow up and kill everyone in the house. No, I'm just kidding. But almost it, the gas tank, the original gas tank that is metal uh, actually cracked at one of the welds and was pissing gas all over the place. As you guys can see, here's our old JB weld. And this is where the gas tank continued to leak out of all because of this bolt here originally cracked. I originally lost the bolt that held the gas tank in here. So I put in a different bolt. And when I did the little tiny booger welds couldn't hold up to it. And then those things just snapped and uh, that's where it started leaking gas uh, which is never good so be wary of the original gas tanks that are metal they do suck i've since upgraded to a plastic tank uh, and they just don't crack because there is no welds and they're the other thing to say about the metal tanks is they're literally as thin as a pop can like you can crinkle those things and you cannot weld it like if you try and weld it you're just going to literally weld right through it because it's so thin of material. Now, the next thing we've broken most recently is the rear master cylinder. As you can see, this one is gold and it is not the original master cylinder. I blew up the rear master cylinder, no thanks to this great design they have for this rear brake arm. Uh, as it, when it bends and gets contorted, it rips pretty much this uh, throw out arm outside the master cylinder and destroys the seals that keeps it from leaking out any fluid. So it's gonna destroy the seals and rip out all your brake fluid on the trail and then you have no brakes because of this awesome brake arm design. Now, the last thing that's broken on the dirt bike is the rear shock mount here. The bushing inside the shock at 60 hours is completely blown out and worn uh, and you're gonna need new shock bushings, which is unfortunate as it only has 60 hours on the shock and it's pretty well screwed and there's a massive amount of play in the rear shock. Other than that, that's about everything that is broke on this dirt bike. It is quite a bit of stuff, but uh, don't let that deter you if you are interested in getting one of these bikes to learn on or maybe you can pick one up for cheap off of someone or one of your buddies. But uh, yeah, other than that, I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you guys leave a like down below if this helped you out or let you know anything new about these dirt bikes you did not know before. Make sure you guys go down below, click subscribe, click the join button next to that. You can get access to my private Facebook group. And uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.